A lot of people, when they start, first start in woodwork, have a lot of trouble with accuracy. Uh, they'll sort of make a project and when it, put it all together and it, nothing quite fits as, as well as they'd like. And it's all about accuracy, precision in measuring and cutting. Uh, so I thought I'd give you my seven tips for uh, uh, improving your woodworking accuracy. Uh, number one, um, don't use this. For precision measuring when you're working over shorter distance obviously you'd have to use a tape measure if you're measuring long distances but for anything on a smaller project then you want to use something like this a steel rule a lot more accurate than a uh, tape measure tape measures a bit flexible the numbers of the calibrations are, are pretty thick and, and uh, easy to uh, get inaccurate um, so it flops around so you don't get a straight line. Um, <clears throat> whereas uh, a steel roll is very precise. Uh, you can uh, line your knife up to it for marking, things like that. Um, <clears throat> I have a set of, uh, of uh, steel rolls running from uh, a metre one down to a little 150 uh, millimetre one. This is what I tend to use most of the time for all of me sort of small precise measuring, you know, when I'm setting uh, machines and things like that. Um, one th the, other, the other thing that steel rules used for, not just for measuring, is also for checking if something's flat. Um, now, the problem with most steel rules nowadays is they're not actually flat in that direction. If I was to sort of eye that like that, I can see there's a bit of a bow in it. And when you come to offer it up to a piece of wood, um, I need to find a bit of wood to test, really. Um, there we are. When you offer it up on a piece of wood like that, if you don't hold it absolutely vertically um, on the, against the wood, then you're going to get a false reading. Uh, so I actually have a, an older steel roll. This is an old one that I've had for many years. And this is made out of spring steel. So you can bend it around. It, all goes, it always goes back to dead straight. Whereas I think these um, newer ones are, are stainless steel. So I know this one's dead straight, so I, I, I use this all this this one for all my sort of testing for flatness. Tip two. Um, check the square. Well, first, firstly, I would recommend using an engineer's square uh, for for um, squaring and checking square and marking out, rather than the uh, the, the traditional wooden uh, squares, which can be inaccurate. Uh, and the difficult to keep it. Um, the other thing is you need to check that your square is actually square. Um, quite often squares that you buy uh, can be a bit out of square and if so send them back until you, until you get a square one. Um, <coughs> the other thing is they can, they can get a bit warm um, on the edges here when you're using a marking knife and things against them. So the way to check the square is to take a piece of board like this uh, that you've checked carefully with your straight edge to make sure that it's nice and straight that way um, <clears throat> and then take your square and make a mark I usually use a knife for this make a mark that way and then turn it round and check that your square lines up dead on line with that mark you can also do the same with the inside of the square, a bit more tricky, let's do it from the other side it's a bit more tricky doing it this way, but you can you, you need to check the inside of the square as well. Because if this one's become worn and been dressed, then it might not be, be true. And again, line it up. I'm having trouble seeing that because there's a bit of a shadow, but I think we're okay. Yeah. So that one's pretty good. Now if there was any, any problems, then you could actually dress, certainly on this outside, it's more difficult to, to um, um, to dress this side. If, if this was out, I think probably the, um, the square's probably at its day. Uh, but this outside edge, you could actually dress it and, uh, and get it through. Tip th three. Uh, 
It's all very well having all these accurate uh, measuring instruments, but if you don't start out with square stock when you started with a project, then all the, all the accuracy of measuring and things could be lost because you're not working from true datum surfaces. Um, so I would recommend that you make sure that uh, with all, all the stock in your, in your project that you establish face side and face edge accurately. Now I've got a video about face side and face edge where I'm banging on out about it. This is one of the things that I really think that people miss out on. If you don't establish your face side and face edge, you think, oh, I can't be asked to do that, it's too much of a hassle, then you will have problems with accuracy later on. Uh, or you're likely to have problems with accuracy later on, regardless of how precise you are with your measuring, you really do need to make sure you, you, you've got your datum surfaces right. So I'd suggest you have a, have a, have a look at that uh, video on face side and face edge. Okay, tip number four. Um, it's always better to work to a, a, a cut line rather than a, a pencil line. I say always, there might be exceptions, but generally, you work to a cut line rather than a pencil line. Um, so uh, we use a marking knife for what I'm marking out. This is a couple of marking knives I use in, uh, in my workshop. Now, I can remember when I was at school about 100 years ago, the marking knives, they had a big wooden handle and they just had a single sharpened edge, which meant you could only use them one way around, probably right-handed. They didn't allow for left-handed people in those days. I find this style of marking knife where you've got two edges, it means you can use the knife either that way or that way. Uh, so they're ambidext ambidextrous in a way. Uh, in other words, you can mark against the straight edge that way or that way. And that's, that's a good point actually. You always use a marking knife against the straight edge with the flat edge of the knife against the, the surface. If you work it that way around with the, the beveled edge, you introduce the opportunity for an accuracy because the bevel might not be right against the edge. So, as I say, I would, I would recommend using uh, marking knives that have got this double edge on them. Um, along with using the marking knife, you need to develop a, a good uh, marking technique. So let's just have a little look at that. Um, I've got a piece of wood here. Uh, and we'll just imagine when we want to mark a, a shoulder at, at, uh, at 40 mil from the end. So if I just put my ruler on the end there like that, make a mark with my knife. I've got that mark there. I can now place the knife into the mark and put the um, square onto, onto the piece, making sure I've got the stock of the square against the face edge there. Put the knife into the mark, slide the square up and knife across. Now it's important that you get a good grip on, 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 the, on the square. If you hold the square like that, where you're just sort of pressing down on it, there's a danger that, that it will slide back as you're marking. Whereas if you get a good vice-like grip on it like that, then there's no, it's not going to shift. Sometimes if you're not holding it properly, what happens is it moves back as the, as the mark and you think you've got a straight line, but it's actually deviated slightly. So make a mark across like that and then turn it and put your knife into the previous knife line. Put your square with the stock against the face, slide it up to the knife and mark across. I'm now able to turn it round because I'm now my face edge is now here. And again, knife into the previous knife line, slide the square up to it, pull it across, and then again, knife on the previous knife line, slide your square up and knife across. And if everything's gone according to plan, your two knife lines should meet up. <clears throat> uh, tip five, I've given up on the finger uh, thing, uh, it's a bit gimmicky and it gets me confused as well. So tip five, um, I've sort of said do all your marking to, to a knife line um, using a knife, but there are situations where you, you don't really want to use a knife because that line might be evident uh, in the finished thing, in which case you'd obviously use a pencil. The thing is you need to make sure it's a nice sharp pencil 
Um, <clears throat> you don't want to, uh, you don't want to sort of stubby HB pencil for your marking. Um, it needs to be a good sharp pencil, preferably an H pencil, which is a little bit harder than a um, than an HB. It keeps its edge a bit longer. Anything a bit harder than an H tends to be you then start getting marking. You know, it tends to cut into the wood. So I would recommend an H pencil, nice and sharp. Um, if we have a look at the marks that, uh, say, an HB would make, you can see why I specify an H. So if we make a mark here with our HB pencil, it's a stubby old HB, um, not sharpened terribly well, compared to a, a nice sharp H pencil. You can see the sort of clarity of the line there. Uh, if I get it a bit closer for you, can you see? Uh, now that HB uh, line is probably about half a mil wide already, and you know half a mil is quite quite a uh, quite a bit when you're trying to be accurate. Um, so I mean the HB is, is quite good when you want to mark face side and face edge or any sort of notation marking because it comes out nice and bold and, 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 and black, whereas the uh, H and thing H is uh, tends to be a bit lighter. So for all your notation, I'd suggest an HB, but for the proper marking. Use an H pencil. Um, um, tip six is all about chisel work. Um, <coughs> when, you, when you're chiseling, you're normally uh, chiseling to a knife line, as, as we've talked about earlier. Um, and the trick is not to go straight to the line. Always creep up on the line, because the danger is if you go straight to the line, then the danger is that the the, the mass of waste. If you've got a massive waist above the chisel, will act on the bevel of the chisel and push it beyond the line. So if we just have a little look at uh, a couple of chiselling situations, one is where you're chiselling out a, a mortise and you're trying to clean up the ends of the mortise, and the other one is when you're paring for a sort of like a lap joint or something like that. Um, so we've got this uh, this mortise here, uh, and we've we've chopped out down to depth, and we're just trying to true up the ends now. Now if I place the chisel, I can feel the chisel click into that line. That's one of the advantages of, of using a knife line. You can feel the chisel actually engage with the line. Uh, if I go straight to the line, there's a danger that the chisel might get pushed beyond the line by the action of the bevel working against that uh, waist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way back like that. And now I've just got a smidgen there to take off, which won't have that action of pushing the chisel back. So I, I'm now confident I can chop down there and end up with an accurate uh, line. One other thing, just from, from doing this, I've just sort of another tip actually. This is going to be a bonus tip. Um, sharp tools lead to accuracy. You can see how much control we've got just from using a a sharp tool. If your tools are blunt, then you can't get an accurate cut. So that's a little bonus for me. Now uh, we could also do this just as easily with a with a mallet and chisel. So uh, same principle applies. So you're working your way back. I actually prefer, you know, I prefer not to use a mallet really, partly because I'm quite tall and I've got a bit of body weight behind me, so I can. I've got the advantage of that, but um, so my mouth technique isn't brilliant. And I'm just going to finish off just to tidy that up. And, uh, so two tips in one there. Don't Creep up on the line, nice sharp tools. Uh, we'll also have a look at um, pairing to this line here, pairing to this line here on a lap joint, but I've got to move the camera around a bit to do that. So I've set up things so you can see what I'm doing with this lap joint. I've actually started, I've, I've sawn, sawn it, I've sawn down the either side and put some weight cuts into the waist. I've just started chopping out the waist. Uh, so what we're looking at is, is how we approach the line. So I'm just going to do it. I could use some mallet, I suppose. I'm just going to 
just going to chop away like this. Hopefully you can see that I'm leaving nice clean surfaces. That's another accuracy issue really because if you, if you keep all your surfaces nice and clean you can see what's going on. Whereas if they're all raggedy, you know, you sort of chop them about and they're all uneven and everything like that, and you can't see what's happening. Now, I'm almost down to the line. I'm just going to take a little bit more. If I'd have gone straight for the line when I started, then I would certainly have got pushed down below the line. But now, we've just got a little, take a little bit more. Clean that up a bit at the back there. Now I'm ready to go to the line. I'm just click the chisel into the gauge line, the knife line. Oh, actually, it's a gauge line actually this one. And I can feel the chisel engage with the line, and then just cut from there. But because I'm not much waist above, it's not pushed the chisel down below. I can do the same from the other side. Again, if I went to there straight away, there's a danger that the, the pictures will get pushed down further. So I'm just going to take off most of the waste. And so there's just a little bit left there. Click the chisel into the line. So what I've done there is I've created the two reference lines on the gauge line. I'm not going to go any further with that. I really wanted to do that just to show you um, uh, how, we, we, how we get down to the line without being pushed below. And as you can see, obviously, sharp chisels are an important part of it, and sharp tools generally. Uh, if you want a bit more information or want to improve your sharpening techniques slightly, I've got a couple of videos about sharpening uh, on, my, on my channel. <clears throat> Finally, tip seven. Uh, sometimes this just isn't accurate enough and that's when one of these becomes useful, uh, a vernier gauge. I have to admit that I find uh, reading half millimetres quite difficult on a ruler. Um, but what I do do is I use a vernier uh, gauge quite often, well, very regular. It's sort of sitting around on the bench all the time because I'm using it uh, as a reference all the time. Um, and it's particularly good for when you're sort of fitting things because there's there's only sort of about point one of a millimetre difference between, difference between a, a tight joint and a loose joint. Um, <clears throat> so the vernier becomes very useful, especially when you're using machinery for for jointing things like that because you can take a measurement. And then dial that that measurement into the or that calibration in, into the the machine to sort of correct any um, any tightness in the joint or something like that. So, for instance, in this situation, I've got a, a joint here, which is just a groove I'm trying to fit a, another piece into, and we're not fitting at the moment. Uh, so, if I take a measurement on here, that's telling me that that's actually exactly 16 millimeters wide. It's a coincidence because I use a 16 millimetre bit. So, uh, but when I measure the piece I'm fitting, it's not quite right at the moment. It, we're coming out at 16.3, oh, 16.35. Um, so what I can do is I can, into the thicknesser, if I'm sort of thicknessing this down to fit that, I can actually uh, dial in uh, or up it by 0.35 of a millimetre and that should give us a precise fit. So I'll just go away and do that and then uh, we'll see what we get. So I adjusted my um, thickness of by 0.3 millimetres and ran that piece through and it's now a nice snug fit there. Um, nice tight fit. It's a bit too tight. Put a put 0.35 millimetres. The other thing I can 
do with the uh, um, the vernier is actually measure depth as well. So there's a, there's a uh, a bit here you can actually measure um, the depth of, uh, of of things as well. Uh, it's, as I say, it's very useful. I use this. Um, what shall we call it? A calibrated uh, um, vernier. Well, not a digital one uh, or or a dial one. Uh, I used to use a digital vernier, and then I started getting paranoid and not trusting it. So I decided to go over to this because it's a lot. Um, there's, there's less can go wrong with it. Basically, you just uh, reading from these calibrations. Um, but you know, if you um, if you're up for trusting them, then uh, go for a, a dial one or. A, uh, a digital one. The other thing about uh, having a vernier in the workshop is it does actually change your attitude to, to accuracy. So um, just measuring with a ruler, your accuracy is probably down to, I don't know, if you've, if you've got good eyesight, down to about 0.5 mil. Um, but uh, that's about it really. Whereas with a vernier, you can increase your accuracy hugely. Uh, and it becomes more important perhaps when you're machine working. But, um, as I say, I, I have had the vernier out on my bench most of the time, and I'm just sort of picking out for doing quick measurements and things like that. So I, I think it's worth having one. So that's my seven tips for improving your woodworking accuracy. Uh, well, it was actually eight, actually, wasn't there? Was, I had the uh, sharpening one. And I've actually got one more as well, uh, which is just about attitude, really. That, um, um, you really need to sort of develop this attitude where you're striving all the time to be as accurate as possible. You don't do things just because they're expedient or just because they have to be easy. Um, you're always looking to sort of get that accuracy. Uh, and you may think, oh, well, you know, I can't saw and plane and, and chisel as, as accurately as, uh, as the marking out that you're doing. Um, <clears throat> but if, as, if you don't have an att att accurate attitude, then your skills won't develop to match that uh, attitude, um, so they go hand in hand really. Um, so anyway, I hope uh, that's improved, uh, will help, help you to improve your accuracy. Uh, and if you have been, thanks for watching. <laughs>